Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Well, this is lecture 35 of basic calculus 1. So, you are discussing some application of integrals to computing volumes of solids of revolution. Today, we will have another application which is to find the lengths of curves using integrals. So, let us see how to uh, do this, but first of all we have to see what is a curve, what do you mean by curve in the plane. So, imagine that you are drawing a curve in the plane somewhere and you are keeping uh, your time that you look at your watch and say at t equal to 0 you have started and then go on drawing the curve. So, as t varies these points vary in the plane. So, any point here can be thought of as having components one x component, another y component. So, now when t varies both these components vary. So, you may think of them as functions x of t and y of t. So, that is what we say that once a curve is there we may think of that as as if it is given parametrically by x equal to x of t y equal to y of t. So, basically it need not be the time t need not be time. If it is a function say y equal to f of x, you can think of x as the time itself, right? That is a parameter. x itself can be a parameter when y equal to f of x. But in general, you can think of another parameter t. As t varies over some interval, you get the points. The x coordinate is a function of that parameter t, y coordinate is a function of that parameter t and you get the point x comma y that is how the curve is done. So, let us see that let us assume that c is a plane curve given parametrically by x equal to x of t y equal to y of t both of them are functions over the interval a to b. We also assume something else that as time proceeds it does not stop anywhere unless it reaches that point b. So, you may say that the derivatives at that point are not simultaneously 0, but first of all we assume that the derivatives of x and y exist with respect to t. So, let us assume that that is what we say that the functions x t and y t are smooth. That is x t and y t are continuously differentiable and the derivatives are not simultaneously 0 at any t in that closed interval a b. So, with this assumption let us look at the curve we want to find its length. Let us say that when t equal to a you have x of a and y of a which gives the point a in the curve say beginning point somehow and then b is the end point which is we can write now x of b comma y of b. So, now the curve is traced in blue here. We want to approximate this uh, length. So, to approximate it what we do? We go to our usual things. Uh, that we choose many points on the curve and then any small portion of that curve is approximated by a straight line segment length of the straight line segment joining those two points like say p 1 p 2. So, we say the curve that the blue one is approximately the length of this. Of course, there will be some errors in this, but as you see at the, the points get closer and closer we will be committing less and less errors. So, as you see we are planning to use our Riemann sum idea uh, making a partition choosing a partition of this a and b and then taking the sum of all these lengths and then take the limit as the norm of p goes to 0. So, let us explain it 
or describe it further. So, what do we do? We take a partition of the interval A to B that is let us choose the point P0, P1, Pn on the curve. So, that is corresponding to the partition say x0 is this x1, x2 and so on on this in, uh, interval A to B. Okay. And then our sum of these straight line segments uh, will give us an approximation for the length of the curve. So, our partition P is a set of points T0 to Tn increasing where T0 equal to A and Tn equal to B and then the corresponding points on the curves are say P i which is x of T i and y of T i. So, now how to get the length of one uh, point P i minus 1 to P i. So, at P i minus 1 we have the point x of T i minus 1 y of T i minus 1 and P i is described as x of T i y of T i. So, it is just the straight line segment and we want to find the length of this straight line segment P i minus 1 to P i. So, that length as you know it is x of T i minus it is some P i to P i. So, you take its x component, take its y component. So, this is x of T i minus 1, this is x of T i. So, we want to find this length hypotenuse. So, it is x of T i minus x of T i minus 1 square plus y of T i minus y of T i minus 1 square square root. That is the length of the line segment. So, uh, before we take the sum, let us look at a convenient way of expressing this length. So, now we know that x of t i minus x of t i minus 1 equal to x prime at some point a i between t i to t i minus 1, t i minus 1 to t i times the length t i minus t i minus 1. That is what our mean value theorem for the differential say. Since x is continuously differentiable, we can write like this for some a i in between t i minus 1 to t i. Same thing happens for the function y. So, by mean value theorem we say that y of t i minus y of t i minus 1 equal to y prime at some point into t i minus t i minus 1. So, here we are taking as if they happen at the same point y i. So, we are using really Cauchy mean value theorem instead of just the usual mean value theorem. So, that in both the uh, functions we can choose the same point a i right inside the interval t i minus 1 to t i. So, that this difference uh, both the differences can be expressed as their corresponding evaluation of the derivatives times the length t i minus t i minus 1. Okay. So, it means x prime means this prime is really with respect to t. Similarly, y prime means its derivative with respect to t. Okay. So, in fact, you can also instead of Cauchy mean value theorem, if you use the usual mean value theorem, you may take this at some other point, possibly we do not know for the same point a i or another point, let us call b i. So, that all is also okay, evaluated at b i. Okay. Then what happens? When you take the uh, any particular length, so that is x prime a i square plus y prime b i square square root times t i minus t i minus 1, even if you take b i instead of a i. So, because this square x of t i minus x of t i minus 1 square will be x prime a i square times t i minus t i minus 1 square. Similarly, this one is y prime b i square t i minus t i minus 1 square. Now, when you substitute in the length formula, you get x prime a i square y prime b i square and this t i minus t i minus 1 squared and again square root. So, that goes out it becomes t i minus t i minus 1. This is the sum we get it is sum of all the line segments approximating the length of the curve. And this looks like a Riemann sum now with the choice of points as our p i which is it is p i minus 1 to p i some other point let us say p i prime. So, that is a i comma b i right. 
So, at that point we are evaluating this. So, it looks like a Riemann sum now. Therefore, when the norm of the partition that is maximum of length of T i minus 1 uh, to T i that line segment that goes to 0 this should give us an integral. Okay. Let us look at that. So, now define the norm of P norm of this partition as maximum of T i minus T i minus 1. So, as this norm approaches 0, we see that the earlier Riemann sum which was square root of x i uh, x prime at a i square y prime at b i square square root into t i minus t i minus 1. So, in the limit it becomes an integral. So, we have integral a to b square root of x prime t square y prime t square dt. So, this we are going to define as the length of the curve c. Okay. So, that is how we formulate the length. We say that this is length of the curve that this integral is really length of the curve. So, let us summarize what we have done. Suppose the curve is given in the form uh, y of uh, y of x of t and y of t with a parameter t where t varies from a to b then its length can be expressed as a to b where this is really integration in t square root of this. Now, we take a particular case say y is a function of x. So, once y is a function of x your x prime t plus y prime t dt now can be uh, we can write this y prime t as uh, d y by d t square and this is d x by d t square. So, you can think of them as differentials in that case it is really a fraction right. So, this d t square and square root they cancel with d t you can write that as uh, square root of d x square plus d y square that also you can write fine or if you divide by d x multiplied by d x then this becomes d x by d t. So, you can take that to be 1 and this becomes d y by d t divided by d x by d t which is d y by d x that gives y prime x. So, you can also express that in this form when y is a function of x you can express it as integral a to b square root of 1 plus y prime x square d x. Now, this x it is not really a and b these limits are for x not for t now. So, it is better to write say c to d where when t varies from a to b x varies from c to d if that is so then that will be the integral fine. So, you may think of this length as integral say c to d square root of 1 plus y prime square d x. So, here when t equal to a x must be equal to c and when t equal to b x must be equal to d that is how you can also look at the integral or the length of the curve. Okay. So, let us use that differential notion again and see how does it look. See inside the integral it is integral a to b of this d t. So, you can think of this whole thing as a differential. Okay. So, let us write it as d s as if the s is the length of the curve. So, it is d s. Then in a simpler way you can write the length of the curve as a to b d s t where t varies from a to b. Yeah, now, s is a function of t it is the it is like length starting from this place t equal to say a. So, when you go to this place say some arbitrary t then this length is equal to s of t. So, you can think of this d of s of t that is by fundamental theorem it will be s of t right and s at b is to be evaluated that is how differential form takes care of the length. Okay. So, or you can think for any tau really for any point t equal to tau starting from a. So, you can think of this as s of tau and s of tau you can express as a to tau s of t dt which is a to tau square root of x prime t square plus y prime t square dt. But this is useful when 
you want to express that length as a function of t at any point t equal to tau this will be the length starting from the beginning of the curve which corresponds to t equal to a point ok that is how this formula can be seen ok. So, again if you look at the differential we we may write d s equal to square root of 1 plus y prime square d x because that is simply x prime square plus y prime square d t which we can also express this way that is d s. So, s as a function of the tau or say alpha will be integral a to alpha s of uh, x d x s of t d t in that sense but now if you want to express in terms of x and if there is confusion you write that as c x starts from c let us say. So, c to alpha this way also we can express there are various ways we can express the same length of the curve as a function of if y is given as a function of x then this is the formula. So, similarly if x is a function of y you can write a corresponding formula, but we will we will come to it. So, how to write now we again we can write d s equal to this is just for emphasis. So, uh, if you look at this it also shows something else this is the a uh, small length in the curve right. So, say portion of the curve so d s. So, that you can now see as square root of d x square plus d y square if you think of this. So, this is really d x and this is really d x and this is d y. So, you may think of this hypotenuse which is square root of d x square plus d y square. So, that shows clearly that d s equal to square root of d x square plus d y square that means, the curve length of the curve has been taken by the approximate length which is joining the uh, chord or second of the curve joining those two points close by points ok. So, this shows directly that the length of the small portion of the curve has been approximated by the length of the corresponding second. So, anyway these are just different ways of looking at the same formula. So, all that we have is the direct formula if it is given in terms of uh, t and t varies from a to b then you can express as integral a to b square root of x prime square plus y prime square d t where this prime means differentiation with respect to t or if y is given as a function of x then you can see as integral as integral c to d where x varies from c to d corresponding to t varies from a to b of square root of 1 plus y prime x square into d x ok. So, let us apply this to one of the examples see how we compute the length. So, first of all let us verify that our length the way we have formulated abstractly is really matching with some known curves. Let us say c is the circle of radius r centered at a b ok. So, we have a b is a point and then you have a circle of radius r r. Then it is length we know it should be equal to uh, 2 pi r fine. So, let us see whether our length uh, the whatever abstract definition we have taken really conforms to that or not. Let us have a verification. Now, for that we have to express that circle uh, in parametric form. So, since r is the radius and x coordinate is a of the center, y coordinate of the center is b, we can write in parametric form the same circle as x equal to a plus r cosine t, y equal to b plus r sin t for t belongs to 0 to 2 pi. So, this directly you can verify if, if you take x square plus y square that will be equal to uh, a square plus b square that is uh, difference from that centers so that will be equal to r square that is you take any x y. So, now you have a b. So, somewhere the origin is. So, you go to a b now that point and then any point here is really r cosine t r sin t had it been the origin. So, it is a shifting of the origin. Since at the origin you take any circle it is parameterized by cosine t sin t any point here if this is your t the angle then this is cosine t sin t 
Therefore, when you shift the origin, any corresponding point on the circle, given circle, will be written as x equal to a plus r cosine t, b equal to r sin t, b plus y equal to b plus r sin t. Where t is that angle, so it varies from 0 to 2 pi. That is the parametric form of this given circle. Okay, with this given circle, now we know that t varies from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, then we go for the computing the length of the curve. For that, we need x prime t, y prime t. So, x of t is a plus r cosine t that gives x prime t equal to minus r sin t. A is a constant, so that gives 0. y prime t equal to b is a constant, so 0 it is r cosine t. Therefore, when you take the square root of this, this is really r square sin square t, this is r square cosine square t. So, when you take the sum of the squares and square root, you would get r. Therefore, the length of the curve is integral 0 to 2 pi square root of x prime t square plus y prime t square dt that gives 0 to 2 pi r times dt and that is 2 pi r. So, it really confirms with whatever formula we are having for the circle case. Let us take some other examples. Okay. So, this is another example. Find the length of the curve y equal to 4 root 2 divided by 3 times x to the power 3 by 2 minus 1. So, here y is given as a function of x. This is traced when x varies from 0 to 1. So, if you want to convert it to parametrically, your parametric equation will be x of uh, t equal to t itself, that is x really, and y of t equal to this function. In terms of t, now you will write. So, 4 root 2 by 3 t to the power 3 by 2 minus 1. Right. So, our parameter t is x itself when y is a function of x. Therefore, when you go to x prime t that becomes 1 and y prime t is becomes really dy by dx. That is how we got that formula, earlier formula of square root 1 plus y prime x square dx and x will of course vary from 0 to 1 that is our t. Okay. So, let us apply that. Now, we need y prime x. So, we differentiate y to get uh, it is 4 root 2 by 3 into 3 by 2 into x to the power half. So, that 3 gets cancelled and this becomes 2 root 2. So, it is 2 root 2 times x to the power half minus 1 gives 0 that is y prime x. So, the length of the curve is integral 0 to 1 x varies from 0 to 1 square root of 1 plus y prime square this square root we have to take. So, now what is y prime square? Once you take y prime square that is equal to 1 plus 2 root 2 square is uh, 8 and x to the power half is x. That is how we get square root of 1 plus 8 x and dx. Okay. So, the formula we are applying is it is x varies from a to b 1 plus y prime x square dx because y is a function of x. So, now it is a matter of integration. So, in this integration you substitute 1 plus 8x equal to u. So, it is u to the power half and then du u equal to 1 plus 8x. So, du equal to 8 dx right. So, dx equal to 1 by 8 du. So, you have 1 by 8 and it is square root of u. So, that gives u to the power 3 by 2 by 3 by 2 it is 2 by 3. 1 plus u 8 x to the power 3 by 2. So, integral is correct and this is to be evaluated at 0 and 1 and subtracted out. So, at 0 and 1 you subtract and see that it simplifies to 13 by 6. So, that is how we are going to evaluate the length of curves.